Yo guys, it's me. Welcome back to the channel. Hope you all are having an amazing day. Had a great day. And today was the last event. Hopefully the last, the third event from Apple in 2020. I'm like, Apple loves these events. Let's be honest. Like, they're enjoying them. Like, this has to be like the 2020 has to be the year with the most product released by Apple. From iPhones to Apple Watches to all the online services. And now we got our final event, which was happened today, a couple of hours ago something we all been waiting for or some have been i have been since june since we got to find out we're getting the new silicon max new silicon chips from apple and if you don't know what that means it just means apple from now on won't be using intel processors so no i7 i9 or even i5 and they will be using or making their own processors just like they do in the iphone so we have the a14 a11 all these processors now the max will also have the Apple's own processor and which is a really big thing if you don't know. So let's dive in what happened today. Quick video, not too long and let's get started. Starting it off, let's talk about the biggest thing that happened and we got a name for a new processor and it's called M1. Completely makes sense. I'm not even joking. On iPhones, we have the A14, A13, all this stuff. Now, I don't know what that A stands for, but we know we get to see these processors on the iPads, iPhones. Now, watch has the own processor, and now considering it's a Mac and it's the first version, it's called M1. So, according to that, we can already assume next year and every year there will be new processors coming from Mac and they will just be going from M1, M2, M3, maybe M1X, M1 Bionic something like that and that's like a trend app is going with we can see that on the phones and hopefully now we get to see that on the Macs. so if you missed the event today this chip is honestly i would say really impressive so in a regular not apple silicon based system from the macbooks we have right now to the imax or even mac pros what we have is different chipsets a chipset for a cpu graphic card controllers thunderbolt controllers and all this stuff and they're spread around on the motherboard or the logic board and they all are involved and they're all required now what has apple done with the silicon now the M1 chip is that taking all these components and put them in one. What that lets Apple do is have a shared memory across the entire system. You can also call it a unified memory. And what that biggest benefit is that you don't have to copy stuff from one location to another. Your system doesn't have to copy a big file or perform a big action to then make a further action. Because it's a shared memory, everyone, all these chipsets have access to that like shared memory and it's amazing now let's talk about the actual stuff that's within that m1 now we have an eight core cpu and the way it's actually split up it's actually four cores of high performance and four cores of efficiency so everything let's just say you're doing your notes or doing some tasks that does not require a lot of power this uh, cpu or the smart system will be triggering the four high efficient like high efficiency courses what that will do is consume much less power by uh, but at the same time giving you enough performance while let's say you're running final code you're running x code you're running logic that's when the high like high power or high performance course kick in next up you get an eight core graphic card integrated graphic card and if you think about it integrated graphic cards are not always the best but in this case you know what i will believe apple it has to be really good because if you're really aiming for 4k pro res editing in final cut 8k pro res that's really you need a solid graphic card you need a really optimized whole like it's not even just about graphic card you need a really optimized system from graphic card to cpu to all the other neural engines that are working and you know what it has to be like you have to try it out but i'm really like i'm really sure it's going to be amazing now moving forward apart from that 8 core cpu and the 8 core gpu we also have a 16 core neural engine the way i see it is that this neural engine ties everything up together and along with that we also have space for machine learning and it's all amazing now i can talk a lot about this i don't want to go too in details with the specs of this m1 silicon if you keep that for next video moving away from the chip side moving away from the technical side we have three new macs macbook air same design but a redesigned interior outside it looks the same start off a macbook pro 13 inch and a mac mini starting with the macbook air it's just like always a lightest or thin notebook uh, is powered now by m1 instead of intel chips and also it's fanless there's no fan inside so you will not hear a fan ramping up ramping down and i think apple can easily achieve that because if you consider phones don't iphones don't have a fan in them and they're running the silicon chips and you can 
they usually won't get warm but sometimes you can really push it to that warm but yeah i don't think you will experience that much with the air because you still have much more surface area to spread the heat versus the small surface area spreading for the phone but yeah i don't think there should be a problem when it comes to thermal performance considering all these chips are really more software driven software powered so that's that we have two usb 4 bolts connectors but they're also turnable 3 so usb 4 consider consists turnable 3 and that's one way Apple gets around the whole branding of Thunderbolt 3 with Intel. Along with that, it also has Wi-Fi 6. And of course, you can connect a 6K external display, the Pro Display XDR, and you have the 40 gigabit link over Thunderbolt 3 or USB 4. Apart from that, you get the normal Touch ID, basically everything that you have when it comes to MacBook Air. This time, way better microphone, the same microphone we've got to see in the newer MacBooks, the directional or, I forgot what Apple calls it. It's like it identifies your voice and it makes it sound better. And now something, I think this is, uh, we don't have a webcam update. It's still 720p, which is sort of like, why? Because we got to see 1080p webcams in the newer iMacs, but it's a 720p webcam, but at the same time, because of the new neural engine, M1 chip, we're able to, Apple is able to process it in a way where it does not look as bad. Now, we don't know how well it's going to look if we actually try it out, but in theory, the webcam or when you call or something like that using webcam on MacBooks, it should look much better than a same computer running uh, Intel system. And lastly, just like casual 18 hours of battery life in the MacBook Air, and that wraps up everything you probably would like to know for the MacBook Air. There's a lot more, but we'll probably cover that in an in-depth review. But now let's talk about the MacBook Pro 13 inch. Now, again, you only have two USB 4 Thunderbolt 3 ports. I would have loved to see four, but we only get two. Again, you can, same thing, everything you have said in the MacBook Air, just copy paste, connect it to an external monitor 6K, at full res, Apple XDR display, that. But there are fans in the MacBook Pro and the Mac Mini, so they're not fanless because, well, Apple is probably want, or you probably want to extract way more power from these computers versus the MacBook Air. That's mainly everything we have with the MacBook Pro 13 inch. And lastly, with the Mac Mini, it's a Mac Mini. It's a computer, but now it's running the M1 chip. It's a lot more powerful, a lot more efficient. And yeah, you same thing at the back. You have two USB 4, Thunderbolt 3, uh, Ethernet, two USB A's with a headphone jack, and also an HDMI 2.0 with a new and improved ventilation system. And that's everything you need to know when it comes to today's event from M1 chip, Apple's new silicon chip, which is amazing, the MacBook Air. The new, the new MacBook Air, the new MacBook Pro 13 inch, and of course the new Mac Mini, which also comes in silver now. So that's like a quick wrap up of the event, what we have announced or what we are going to be getting. All of these products are available to order right now. And then I think the shipping next week. So if you're into that, make sure you grab one. And at the same time, if you're really like wondering how well these chips are, I also did like this tweet and Instagram thing. If you have any questions regarding this, ask me. So I thought I will take a few of them up. So one of you asked me, is it safe to buy it for long-term use or would it be better to wait for a second generation? So we are talking about the Mac Silicon. So Apple Silicon M1 chip and his, uh, and continue. Since this is a major architectural change, I'm not sure about stability. Uh, honestly, here's what I would say. Like here's the, like, my point of view. Uh, Apple is, it's not like the first time Apple is making these chips. They have been doing that since 14 years when it comes to phones and now they even do it for watches. So that's it, they have that, uh, I would say stability part that they know when they, when like we know that when they come out with a chip, so far it's not been that it's a bad chip. It's worked phenomenally and it's been amazing. Now, if you're going to say uh, we want to wait for second generation, my point of view for that is that it doesn't matter because every year, now, just like the phones, we are going to get a new chip. So next year, we're probably going to get M2. Next year, M3, M4. If there's not a big change, they might just call it M1X, M2X, just the way the naming scheme will just get carried over from the iOS or from the A series of the silicon chips. Now, when it comes to stability or like the fundamentals of what's going to work, Rosetta 2, I'm really sure is going to be really good when it comes to merging or bringing out these apps from older Intel based or apps that are made to run only on Intel systems over to Mac and seeing how powerful these chips are, especially the M1, the only thing I can see is that 
chips, they will just keep on getting better as we move forward. But at the same time, it's not going to be like it's a day and a night difference. For example, let's just say we have the A14 now, right? For the iPhones, for the iPhone 12 and all the new iPhones, we have the A14 chip. Now you look back at the iPhone 11, we have the A13. Now there's no point of doing benchmarking and stuff because at this point in stage, I'm going to reference to Jonathan who said that. At this point of stage, it's way more than how much performance you can do, what, how many cores the chip has. It's way more than. It's way more smarter. Machine learning and neural agencies are working phenomenal. They're working together in a way that you're getting a performance that you really can write on a paper. You can't do that. So looking at that, I would say I don't think it's going to be a rush to wait another year or two. Like if you already have an Intel-based Mac and maybe you get it this year, maybe last year, no one is buying like we don't everyone like everyone does not buy a new mac or new phones every year some do and considering that there's not going to be a big change you can have a m1 mac right now and next year we're going to have the m2 there will be probably a performance boost we might get some cool better neural engines better machine learning architecture maybe another like sort, sort of security chip or something like that but at the end of the day it's more software based uh ios is really heavily software based. Apple, I would say is like a really great combination of hardware and software, like the way blended, it works phenomenally. Whereas you go for other companies, other brands, other platforms, you can see that the lack of mixture or lack of communication between the hardware and the software. So considering that in my mind, I don't think there's a point to wait. If you really, if you're into that, you need that performance. You would love to know about it. Go for it. It's it's a great, but at the same time, if you want to wait for a couple of reviews, uh, if you, I will probably be doing some reviews, so stay tuned for those. But yeah, it should be really good, and I don't think it will disappoint anyone. Like we all have high hopes on this. Apple has been working on this for quite long, so yeah, that's I think that sh answers that. Do some performance testing between it and some of the newer i7 and 9 processors. So stay tuned for those videos. I will probably try to get my hand on these computers and. We will run them down how it works from let's just say a MacBook 16 inch 2019 versus the M1 MacBooks 2020. So stay tuned for those. I will probably do some comparisons. We'll do some real life videos like real life day tests. Stay tuned for those. Subscribe if you haven't already hit the bell that we get notified. And hope you enjoy this event. Like it was an amazing event. And again, because I'm pretty sure this is going to last even we're going to see this year. I just want to say all these events Apple has done. In 2020, virtually, they've just stepped up the game so much for other competitors. Because if you think about it, the production quality is insane. From first event to the iPhone launch event, or even the Apple Watch iPad event, and now the Mac event. It's insane. From editing to just shooting it, and it's like really good. So yeah, hope you like this video. I'm hoping I did not make it too long. So yeah, I'll see you guys later. Stay tuned for upcoming reviews in the videos. And yeah, hope you have a great day. And also, lastly, if you use a Mac, if you run on the latest Mac OS, Mac OS Big Sur, which is a big jump from Mac OS 10, it's a Mac OS of version 11, is available this Thursday. So make sure you update. I usually wait a day or two just in case there are bugs or something happens with the servers where you're downloading, it crashes. But yeah, that's available this Thursday. And I would say definitely give it a shot. I, it's really good.